beautiful Hollywood skyline. Well, good morning everyone. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. Well, I'm up early because I'm going over to pick up my rental car for this road trip. Then we're going to drive Ja down to Orange County and he's going to hang out with Breck for the next couple of days while I'm out of town. Then they're going to come back and meet up with me and we're going to go vlogging the end of my trip. So let's go get the rental car. Days of Jordan the Lion begins now. Oh, it looks like Rick and Morty are driving this car. All right, we're here. Let's see what they got for me today. All right, I'm a sucker for Nissans, so we're getting a Nissan today. Right there in that mess of bedding is Jaw. He's eagerly awaiting our departure. Abracadabra, there he is, see? I learned something at the Magic Castle. I made him reappear. Oh yeah, we're almost there. Good thing too, Jaws getting pretty restless. That's also why it's better that you hang out with Breck for a few days than go with me, because you do not like the long car trips. Do you think that uh, Jaw was happy to see Breck? He almost jumped out the window of the car when he saw him. He was so excited. You're happy, huh? Kind of blended in with the shade, Jaw. Just sitting here getting a what they call a sun bath. Life's good, huh, Jaw? Well, since we're in Orange County, I decided I wanted to vlog something down here. And I found a pretty cool little church that I wanted to see, but it's not your average church and it's not your average story attached to it. So that's our first stop. Well, we've come out to Tustin to take a jaunt back in time. You're gonna love this little city. Oh yeah. Now this actually doesn't have really that much to do with what we're coming to vlog today, but this is a big part of the history, this Tustin Garage. They've turned it into a coffee shop now. But what we wanna actually talk about is this whole plot of land that this is on. Because this all used to be in the late 1800s it was owned by the man who <laughs> built Tustin High School. He built the Tustin Hotel and also helped build the, uh, the lemon packing plant. He owned many acres. It was like an orchard here of, um, of lemons and orange trees. And on that property, he had built a Victorian mansion that he lived in. And now that was the centerpiece of this beautiful property that's now the Jamestown Village. Now, <clears throat> over the time that he owned it, he, you know, sold off property because he didn't need it. He sold off acreage of it. And in the end, when he sold it, it only had a few acres left. And then eventually, in the mid 1950s, it was sold to a land developer by the name of Gilbreth. Now, the Gilbreth family still owns this property. And at the time in 1955 that they bought the property, they actually moved into the mansion that was here. However, the mansion was in pretty bad shape and him being a land developer, he decided to use this property to start the shopping plaza. Now this is not your average shopping plaza by any stretch of the imagination because it has a really great architecture to it that you're gonna see over here. But what he decided was in 1960, he decided he wanted to start building this shopping plaza and decided to offer up the Victorian mansion to anyone that would be willing to come and move it. Now nobody was willing to come and take it, nobody wanted the mansion, so he offered it up in pieces and said, hey, if you can use it for anything, go ahead and come take it. So Walter Knott himself of Knott's Berry Farm came and grabbed a mantle from the uh, mansion, took it to Knott's Berry Farm, and then as I understand, um, a lot of the interior of the mansion they actually used to build one of the saloons here. Now, one of the great things about the Gilberts is he loved all the trees that were on the property and though he wanted to build this, he felt that it was a shame that he would have to get rid of all those trees. So he said he wanted to find a way to put them around the property to beautify the property and so he uprooted them, moved them, except for one. He had one oak tree that he loved, and it was actually over here. 
Now, this oak tree was kind of the centerpiece of this property and he said, I wanted to do something great with it, but I didn't know what. I figured, you know, anybody could put flowers around it or, you know, maybe I could turn it into a tree house, but then I was worried, you know, maybe kids would get hurt or something. So he said he had a grand idea. And his grand idea was, he was gonna build a church based around that right here in the parking lot. Now, this was not only an average church, this was a church that had a lot of meaning to him because he said one of the favorite moments of his life was the time that he would spend with his grandmother in Columbia, Tennessee. Now he said his grandmother one time in 1912 took him by carriage, horse and carriage, to her church where she attended during the Civil War. It was in Hopeville, Tennessee, and he said he never forgot that, so he wanted to build a monument or a memorial to his grandmother. And so he said he wanted to build a church, a replica of the Hopeville Church in miniature form, put it right here in the middle of the shopping plaza, and it would go and would have the it would actually be built around the um, the oak tree. Now you're probably looking at it and you're going, I don't see an oak tree. Well, you might notice that some of the shingles look a little bit um, newer. At some point, the oak tree suffered damage and the oak tree died. So they ended up removing it, but they kept the church here and they actually rent it out for weddings and things like that. Now you can tell he really loved this idea because he went all the way into putting real stained glass in the windows. And I'm told that somebody here actually has the key that they show people for um, if they want to check it out for weddings. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably not open, but never know. We'll see if maybe we can find somebody to uh, be willing to show it to us. So yeah, right here in the middle of this shopping plaza is this beautiful little, little church with siding and shake roof and it even has, let's go see it, a little red brick porch. You can see there's even a cross at the top. Pretty cool, right? Now I'm hoping to get inside because there are a few surprises inside I'd love to tell you about. Check out all of this, isn't this great? I love this. And you can see some of it starting to break apart, but yeah, look at that. Rick, we're not having a whole lot of luck yet. We're trying to find out who has the key, and first I said, I think it's the salon. We went in the salon, they didn't have it. Then I looked up and they said that Gertrude's Antiques, or Gertie's Antiques, so I found one antique store here. That guy said, well, she died 10 years ago, but you can go across, and they'll, somebody over there has the key, and he was telling me that, um, you know, he's been here for like 30 years. This plaza, though you, you look at the, um, the church, you think it's been here forever, it's actually only been here for like 40 years, really. Actually, 50 years now. So we're gonna go over here and see. They said Whimsy has it. Well, so far, we're coming up empty. Nobody that we've talked to has the key, and the two places that we're told have the key aren't open right now, so. We wanted to get inside because they have a little organ, they have about four pews inside, and they do occasionally, they were telling me, um, occasionally they used to have more weddings, but they rarely kind of have them now. But the uh, guy in the antique store said, last one we had was about a year ago, and we charged them $100, and that was just to have somebody sit outside and make sure they didn't burn the place down. So I thought that was pretty cool. He was telling us that he's been here, you know, probably since 20 years after it was started and he said at the time that he came here all of these they weren't they weren't different shops or anything they were all antique shops they weren't like salons and dance centers and whatever he said they were all pretty much antique stores and um, then just over time it's changed you know but he said that mr. Gilbreth when he started building this whole place and built this church he said that he and his dad built this together well, I'm doing the best I can. There's a minor, minor open space in the curtain to see inside, so I'm trying to show you guys 
as much as I possibly can. I don't know that that's helping much though, I'm sorry. Breck and I were just noticing this. This is from when the family originally started building this shopping plaza. They put their names, you can see it says, right here it says Gill. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, we're gonna wait it out a little bit and hope that maybe the, uh, the person with the key shows up but it's not looking good. So if we can't, I guess that'll give us an excuse to come back, won't it? Well, gang, unfortunately we couldn't make it happen today, so I guess we'll have to come back some other time and hopefully we can get inside the next time. I think that was a pretty cool story. Just to, just to get to see it, I'm happy. Well, we're back and we've been wrestling around with Jaw. He's having a blast. Breck has to go to work here in a little bit, so when he takes off, I'm going to take off. And then he'll come back in a couple hours and hang out with Jaw for the next three days. So, you can tell Jaw's not going to be uh, too bummed without me, probably. Hey, Jaw, look. Breck's pet named Flash. It's popped its head in. Oh, well, she did. That's hey. not for you. Hey, hey, you thief. I was wondering where the other half of that went. That's for her. Hey, don't take the strawberry. No. All right, amigo, I'm out of here for a couple of days. We'll see you very soon. You're gonna have a blast. You and you, she's eating the strawberry. She's been chasing the strawberry around. And then we will reconvene on, what, three days? We'll see you in three days, Joster. Miss you, bud. Well, the lonely drive home without Jaw is happening now. Well, I just got home and had some mail. Let's check it out. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Leonard Paxton. Much appreciated. Much, much appreciated. All right, I'm giving a shout out to this pizza that I found. This is a frozen pizza that is cauliflower crust. You can tell it's only got 330 calories per half. So that's pretty good, and it tastes really good, too. It's a little pricey. It's like eight or nine bucks for each one, but really good and pretty good for you. Well, good evening, my friends. I got the laundry in right now. I'm going to take care of that and pack my bags and get out of here tomorrow. Wanted to thank Shannon and Pamela Martinez for making contributions to my channel. And tomorrow, we're going to take off and have a great trip. Now, I've already kind of mapped out a few of the days. Some days I'm actually going to be doing three vlogs, some days two vlogs, some days one. So, we're going to get quite a bit out of this trip. And as of tomorrow, I don't really know what I'm going to do at all tomorrow. I have a few vague ideas, but we'll just let tomorrow shake out on its own. So come back tomorrow and see what I figure out and what I decide to do. Have a great night, and tomorrow let's hit the road. Have a great night, and goodbye.